For nearly a century, the Nebraska State Capitol has stood as an iconic symbol of art and architecture. We've got lots of room over here. Certainly, the timing makes sense. The Nebraska State Capitol is an active workplace in an artistic setting. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. How many of you are 10 years old? Imagine it would have taken your entire lifetime to build this building. The Capitol's design was selected in a national competition from plans by 10 leading architects. One stood out from the rest a design by renowned architect Bertram Goodhue. From the beginning, Goodhue had a grand plan with detailed drawings. It's just apart from anything that had ever been done before. It's all carefully planned and laid out to tell a story of Nebraska and world history. Not only was Goodhue's design innovative, so was his plan for construction. The new capital was built in four phases around the building it was replacing. By the time the new Capitol opened in 1932, its bold design dazzled the public as a masterpiece of artistic architecture. As the administrator of the Capitol Commission, Bob Ripley is responsible for the upkeep of the State House. They should be able to work without much trouble. For Nebraskans who've been here many, many times, they probably have assumed whatever they see is the completed work. From the outside, it appears to be finished, and actually from the inside, you would think it's finished. But it wasn't. As a matter of fact, when they moved into the Capitol in 1932, uh, it really wasn't finished. You wouldn't have seen the murals in the Great Hall, for example. You wouldn't have seen the murals in the North Rotunda. That was equally true of the courtyards, because if you looked at the courtyards, you would have seen paths converging in the center of the courtyard with a little round space. Well, you, you knew that that was designed for something and that more than likely it was for a fountain. The Capitol's construction spanned from before and then after the stock market crash of 1929. That changed the whole landscape especially financially for the state. The courtyards were never finished. There was always a, uh, a financial issue, and so there was never any extra money. And during the years since then, they have finished many of the murals, but never went so far as to totally finish the Capitol, and that would be the four courtyards. It's been a topic that's been considered by the legislature, uh, well, at least in the early 2000s. By 2013, a group of former state senators began meeting to seek a strategy to complete the Capitol courtyards. That is the last element in the Capitol design. We as former state senators absolutely love this Capitol. And as a, a combined force, many of the senators you know, want to do their part to enhance the building. And I think the legislature uh, had, a, had a real sense that they did want to finish the Capitol building, that they particularly wanted to finish it during the 150th year uh, for the state. The timing was right, I think, financially, and I think there, there comes a time where you say, you know what, if not now, when? The former legislators convinced acting state senators to pass legislation in 2014. And then the Capitol Commission began carrying out Bertram Goodhue's unfinished design. Goodhue died just two years into the 10 years it took to build the building. But in terms of the details, he had the vision for the building as a whole, and his office provided drawings to the Capitol Commission. Many of those preliminary sketches were just suggestions. However, Goodhue's office left us enough detail that we could clearly do the design for the fountain from their preliminary drawings. So we did that. New architectural drawings were sent to State Brass Foundry and Atlas Bronze Casting in Utah to fabricate the designs. Soon after, ground was broken to begin renovation of the Capitol courtyards, including concrete foundations and service and drain pipes. 7 a.m., March 15th, the first of four fountains are arriving at the state capitol. This stuff here, he'll touch up when they get back. Okay. We'll unbolt it when we get it off the trailer. 
I'm the lead welder on them. I've done all the welding so far. The casting company casts them, brings us the pieces, and I clean them up and there, make sure everything lines up. Each bowl has 28 pieces to it. It takes fitting all 28 pieces, and the challenge comes in making sure all the pieces stay level through the whole process and flat so the water will spill out. This piece is different because they couldn't fit it through the doorway. So I made it completely just like all the other, the other three bowls, and then we cut it apart after it was all fabricated and done. Keep bringing it this way. I want it up on the blocks. The reason that we cut it on a zigzag, there's some structural members that go out for support. So we wanted to arrange our cuts to affect those thick areas and the structural integrity of the piece as little as possible. I thrive on worthy projects. It's a lot easier to put your heart and soul into something that is very important because that's what makes the work worthwhile and that's what makes it a, the difference between a, a mediocre piece and a great piece. Once the welds are done, the raised portions are then removed and smoothed out with grinders and sanders by bronze foundry owner Stan Watts. Then, a patina or chemical coloring process is applied to all bronze surfaces to complete the fountain bowls. One by one, the remaining fountain bowls are brought into the three other courtyards. Each eight-foot fountain weighs 1,800 pounds set atop a bronze collar. The base of each fountain is surrounded by granite curbs. And like most of the artwork in the Capitol, the fountains tell a story. We chose to use eight different icons of Native American culture that represent water. And that is consistent with much of the iconography that exists elsewhere in the Capitol. To preserve Goodhue's original design of the courtyards, workers are relaying diagonal walkways of red sandstone with contrasting black and white paving tiles. If you look down on those courtyards now, those black and white tile were in the rotunda of the second state capitol. The renovation is in its final phase. Today, workers are installing rolls of sod to complete the landscaping. Before the courtyards can be unveiled to the public, workers are running a test of the fountain's water system. Could you design the fountains to conserve water? Once filled, water cascades over the rim and is recycled. September 23rd. We are here to not only celebrate a fountain, we're here to celebrate the 150th anniversary of our statehood. Today, and the fountains are being dedicated as part of Nebraska's 150th birthday celebration. It is truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here today as we put this final piece in place for the finishing of our Capitol building. So, without any further ado, I want to wish our state of Nebraska happy birthday. <laughs>